Continuing on in section 7.2 here, exponents can also be expressed as fractions. Fractional exponents are called rational exponents. We know that 3 squared equals 9. We can write the same expression using rational exponents. We can say 9 to the 1 half power equals 3. That means that there's going to be two things that are multiplied together to get to 9, and both of those things are 3's. 3 is a number that when multiplied by itself equals 9. In general, a raised to the 1 over m power equals b, means that b is multiplied as a factor m times and equals a. In example 4 here, we're going to simplify with rational exponents. We're going to simplify the expression here. We're looking for what number times itself 4 times, according to our denominator here, equals 81. So we're going to break 81 down into its prime factors with a factor tree. We're looking for what times something equals 81. 9, time, 9 times 9 I know is 81. And then what times something equals 9. Here 3 times 3. We also could have broken this down as 3 times 27 if we wanted to and then broken down from there. It really just depends on which factors pop into your head first. So, I'm looking for something that I can multiply times itself four times. Here I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So, 81 to the 1 fourth power equals 3. Another way of saying that, guys, is 3 to the fourth power equals 81. Okay, we're just using a little bit of a reciprocal there on the exponent. So, 3 is our solution here. Now, feel free to pause here and give these a try if you'd like. Simplify each expression. We're looking for what number times itself four times get me, gets me to 16. 16 is 2 times 8. 8 is 4 times 2. And 4 is 2 times 2. So when we break this down to its prime factors, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And since we're looking for a group of four things, I have four twos there, that means that this equals 2. So 16 raised to the 1 fourth power equals 2. 27 to the 1 third power means I'm looking for something times itself 3 times. Looking for groups of 3 here. 27 is 9 times 3, which is 3 times 3. So my prime factorization is 3 times 3 times 3. Since I'm looking for a group of 3 and I have 3 3's here, this just equals 3. Again, the denominator of our exponent tells us how many we're looking for in a group. How many times our base had to be multiplied by itself to get us to our base of our power here. Here, looking for groups of two. 64 is eight times eight. So we can stop here. If we recognize that it's eight times eight, we know this is going to equal eight. A group of two things, eight times eight. Okay, let's say though, that I broke this down differently. Let's say that 8 times 8 didn't pop in my head. And instead, I started off with something like uh, 2 times 32. 32 is 4 times 8. 4 is 2 times 2. 8 is 4 times 2. And 4 is 2 times 2. So what I have here is 1, 2, 3, 6 twos. I'm looking for groups of two. So I have a group of two twos, and another group of two twos, and a third group of two twos. And since we're multiplying here, I'm still multiplying my groups here, and I get eight. So uh, you don't have to necessarily break it down the right way, per se, uh, to get to the eights. We can get there from our prime factors, no matter what they are. So even if we'd stop beforehand, uh, see our two groups of eight originally, gave us 8, or we can break it down differently, get all the way to the prime factors. Every group of 2 is one of our factors. So here's a group of 2, here's a group of 2, and here's a group of 2. We multiply those together and we get 8 the same way. We can also have expressions like 9 to the 3 halves power, where the numerator of our exponent tells us how many factors we have. We can treat each factor individually. So here if we look, we're going to simplify the expression. We're still looking for things that multiply to 64 in groups of 2. So 64 we still said is 8 and 8, two groups. 
So this is like saying that we have 64 to the 1 half power times 64 to the 1 half power times 64 to the 1 half power. We know that we can add those exponents and that's how we get to 3 halves. On the last slide, that we, we said that 64 to the 1 half power is 8. So each of those is 8. When we multiply them, we get 5 twelfths. So when we simplify this, we can pretend that that exponent isn't there, or the numerator of the exponent isn't there. Okay, and we can get our 8. And then we can bring back that numerator as an exponent. 8 cubed gets me to 512 as well. Now feel free to pause here and give these a try if you'd like. Again, we're looking for what number times itself two times gets us to 25. 25 is 5 times 5. So our base that we multiplied twice was 5. Now we're going to use that numerator to tell us how many times we had that base of 5. Here it's 3, and we get 125, which is the same as 25 to the 3 halves power, or 5 cubed. For B, we're looking for groups of 3. 27 is 9 times 3, 9 is 3 times 3. So our prime factorization is 3 times 3 times 3, which is perfect because we're looking for a group of 3. So 27 to the 1 third power is 3, and now we have to bring over that numerator as an exponent. 3 squared, or 3 times 3, is 9. C, we're looking for groups of 4. 16 is 4 times 4, and 2 times 2, 2 times 2. We're looking for 4. Here I have 4 twos. So 16 to the 1 fourth power is 2. Now don't forget that that's also cubed, so we got to keep that cube. That's telling us that we have 16 to the 1 fourth times 16 to the 1 fourth times 16 to the 1 fourth. We have three of those factors. 2 cubed here is the same as 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So again, we keep that numerator as our exponent. The denominator tells us how many are in a group. So I multiplied 2 times itself 4 times to get to 16. And then I took that 2 and cubed it to get to 8. The take note on page 428 talks about multiplying powers with the same base, and we've been talking about this all section. So to multiply powers with the same base, we can go ahead and add the exponents, uh, keep our base, add the exponents. So when I look at example 6 here, keep in mind that each individual type of factor uh, can be put together. So here I have 2 times a to the 2 thirds times 3 times b to the 1 fourth in parentheses times a to the 1 third times 5 times b to the 1 half. So there's a lot of different ways to show multiplication here, uh, but since it is just all multiplication, I can use my associative property to drop my parentheses, change my grouping, and rewrite these all as individual factors multiplied together. It's important to remember here that our coefficients don't have to stay with our variables. So the 2 doesn't have to stay with the a to the 2 thirds power. The 3 doesn't have to stay with the b to the 1 4 power. Uh, the 5 doesn't have to stay with the b to the 1 half power. So once I do that, I can group my uh, factors by like factors. I have number part, and a number part, and a number part. Those constants I can multiply together. 2 times 3 times 5 is 30. I can put all of my constants together. Now we're going to look and see if any of our powers have the same base. Here I have a's, here I have a's. And those I can put together as well. I keep my base and I add my exponent. So since they're both a's, I keep the a and I add my exponents. 2 thirds plus 1 third has a common denominator, so I keep the denominator and I add the 2 plus 1 and get 3 thirds, which simplifies to 1. So I have a to the first power, but we don't need that one. Then I have b's. So again, I keep my base 
add my exponents. Because I'm multiplying these powers that have the same base, I can keep my base and add my exponents. Here I need a common denominator, which between 2 and 4 is 4, so I'm going to multiply by 2, top and bottom, which is going to give me 1 fourth plus 2 fourths. I keep my denominator, add my numerators, 3 fourths, so b to the 3 fourths. Feel free to pause here and give these a try if you'd like. Uh, here I have number of parts, my constants, 2 times 2. And I have variable factors, c's and c's. And since both of those have the same base, I can keep my c and add my exponents. One thing here, guys, is when we do these, make sure that we're writing our exponents raised up and a little smaller so that we can tell that they're exponents and not multiplication. So here, since I have a common denominator of 5, I can just add my 3 plus 1 and get 4 fifths. And I get 4 times c to the 4 fifths. In b here, remember our coefficients are 1 if there aren't any coefficients there already. And since we're just multiplying 1 times 1 gives me 1. And I don't need to put 1 if I'm going to multiply by something else. So we don't have to worry about our coefficients at all here. Okay, and we can go right to our variable parts since that's all that we have shown. Since I have the same base here, both ends, I can multiply them together by keeping my base and adding my exponents. Here I have a common denominator, so I keep it as 3, and I take 1 plus 4, 5. I get n to the 5 thirds. In C here, I have b's that I can put together, and I can put together my c's. As long as they have the same base, I can combine them, and I do that by adding my exponents. Since I'm multiplying powers here, everything's being multiplied, I can combine them by adding my exponents. So keeping my base, adding my exponents. Uh, here we're going to need a common denominator. So 9 and 3, common denominator is 9. To get to 9, I have to multiply by 3. So I do the same top and bottom. Here I get 6 over 9 plus 4 over 9. which is going to give me b to the 10 over 9 power. For my c's, my common denominator between 5 and 10 is 10. So to go from 5 to 10, I multiply by 2, and I do the same to my numerator. So I get c to the 4 over 10 plus 9 over 10. Since I have a common denominator, I keep my denominator, add my numerators, and I get 13 over 10. For d, uh, we have a little bit more going on here. We have constants are 3, 7, 3, and 7. And those we can multiply all together. Okay, it doesn't matter that the 3 is a coefficient for the j and the 7 is a coefficient for the m. That doesn't matter. Uh, here, since all we're doing is multiplying straight across, here we have multiplication, 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 Again, we have multiplication. It just looks a little different. Since all we're doing is multiplying, we can multiply those straight across. And we get 441. Then, I can take my like variable parts together. Both my j's. And since I'm multiplying, I add my exponents here. Common denominator, 6. Multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. I get 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6. I get j to the 5 sixth power, and I keep my constant there. And I can take my m's together. Multiplying power, same base, we're going to add our exponents. 1 fourth plus 3 halves, common denominator here, 4, which means I'm going to have m to the 7 over 4. Again, just make sure that we keep our variables uh, with the same base, so our m's go together and our j's go together. Recap for section 7.2. A property of exponents can be used to multiply powers with the same base. 
And to multiply them with the same base, we add the exponent.